Thanks for the opportunity to present IBM's work on agricultural computer vision. As you know, there are diverse applications of geospatial temporal data ranging from insurance to finance, agricultural, consumer and utility. Many different teams within IBM are working on different aspects of agricultural analytics. Scope of my presentation is on how to scale agricultural analytics. In order to scale agricultural analytics, there are three main challenges. The first challenge is that the data occurs in various kinds of formats depending on whether the sensor is in situ, proximal or remote or whether it is mobile or stationary. The second challenge is about the data volume. As you all know, the IoT generated data is reaching 10,000 exabytes and more, more importantly, the growth of this data is about 40 exabytes per month and one needs to be able to handle this volume to scale the analytics. Specifically, one of the consideration for scaling analytics is how to move IoT data from disk to processor memory. Sometimes it takes long time to move this data into memory and that may be one of the constraints for scaling the analytics. The third aspect of the challenge is that the each layer of the data or each modality of the data in itself while is providing the value it is not enough for it to alone um, provide any insights. Typically there are multiple layers as shown here as I am clicking through here. which may be related to the temporal context or spatial context, which are important to make a complex insight about the data. If you look at current methodology conventionally used for making geospatial insights, you will see that an analyst has to order individual scenes which are stored in literally billions of files, download, assemble, resample, reproject and align, etc. before a complex insight can be made out of those scenes. PAIRS, which stands for Physical Analytics Integrated Repository and Services, is a curate once and use many paradigm. In this work, we pre-process big data store in, into common formats and do spatial temporal joints and bring it into a global reference system. So in pairs, we are taking IoT data which is originating from heterogeneous sources such as sensors, drones, and satellites, and organizing them into discoverable contextualized information in a one single global referencing system. And once you make insights, that could be also available as one more layer in this representation. Here is the architecture of our system. The data provided by data and content providers is curated, aligned and brought into a single reference system and further this data is distributed so that it is closer to the compute resources. The third layer is the analytics layer. Various search and data services are provided through this analytic layer. Typically we have three types of service. One is the data service, 
uh, where client can ask uh, a particular type of curated data. Search service, here is an example of a search service such as show all areas in Iowa, which has in a month of June, an NDVI larger than certain value and less than a certain amount of precipitation. The analytic platform service is a little bit higher level service where you can ask for a particular kind of a forecast at a larger level of granularity. As a result of the pre-processing of the data, the pair scales to big data and complex analysis. As shown in the chart here, as the complexity of the data increases, the pairs performance also scales up with that. In particular, what we have observed is that our analytics are scalable. That means analysis is independent of the data size. And it enables analysis without moving the data. So here is a simple example of a um, pairs query. Show me total precipitation on all corn fields in Iowa in next 24 days. So as you can imagine, it uses a variety of layers which relate to land use data, satellite data, seasonal weather forecasts, all available as pairs layers which have been pre-curated. For the rest of the presentation, I will explain three use cases that can highlight the benefits of our scalable approach. The first use case is that of how this scalable approach can help us easily fuse multiple models. Say, take instance of global seasonal weather forecasting. As you can see in the table below, there are literally dozens of models that are available to do seasonal weather forecasting. And we have fused these models to pre provide significant improvement on overall weather forecasting. So our multi-model blending work involves first doing the, the functional analysis of variance to understand various orders of errors and typically the model accuracy can depend strongly on weather situation and weather situation can be parameterized and that is how we blend the models. As shown here, the model blending work involves the various model forecasts available as layers and other forecasted parameters such as pressure and zenith angle. All of these are discretized and categorized and used as a big machine learning exercise where these models can be blended depending on the actual weather situation. For example, here we show empirical evidence that our method of model blending works. Um, here is the best sub-seasonal forecast from the individual ensemble of models. Whereas when we use the mo model blending work, um, so these are the measurements and our model blending work beats the best sub-seasonal forecast. Our multi-model fusion work has resulted in more than 30% error reduction for 30 day ahead forecasting. So we have developed a gridded forecast and validated by multiple weather stations across CONUS. And we see that both temperature as well as wind speed, our errors 
are much significantly lower than state-of-the-art models. The second use case I want to illustrate is that these various layers can serve as features for deep learning and we have used this to do situational classification. For example, we use pairs to do acreage and yield forecasts. Typically, multiple satellite layers are used, including weather information and soil data and historical crop surveys. And using deep learning models, we have done acreage forecasts, which are available as new layers. Here is one result of early crop recognition almost six months before we were able to accurately predict the corn and soybean uh, acreage. The third use case I want to present is how pairs can enable a complex analytics such as evapotranspiration. For example, evapotranspiration is modeled as an energy balance of three components, net radiation, sensible heat flux, and soil heat flux. Each of these components is in turn modeled based on very detailed physical modeling that is shown in the right. And based on various pairs data layers, we assess evapotranspiration and which is available as a new analytics layer. Global evapotranspiration forecasting can be achieved using our methods. Here on the left you see our forecast model is very consistent with the measurements. On the right you can see that we can do the evapotranspiration for very large regions such as entire China. What is interesting is that once you know the evapotranspiration and if you can correlate them with the yield maps, you can somehow also use this to do precision irrigation. And we have experimented with this with large wineries um, where Having known the yield maps historically, we have controlled a smart variable rate irrigation system on the ground based on our evapotranspiration uh, predictions. And we have seen that uh, by doing pre precision irrigation, we get 26% more yield compared to conventional methods. In summary, we have found that indexing and pre-curating data will help achieve scalable analytics and they are competitive. Thank you. Um, here is the team which has been working for a number of years on this problem and I'm happy to say that we have huge amount of traction with various clients over worldwide on this agricultural analytics topic. Thanks again for inviting me to present IBM's work on agricultural spatiotemporal analytics and how to scale it.